Welcome to another FAQ Monday. Today we talk about my top three albums, quad tracking, and the Axe Effects. If you guys have a question, go ahead and leave it down below in the comments, and maybe you will appear on a future FAQ Monday. First question. How did you get your double and quad tracking so tight? And what would you recommend to a player who was trying to get better at it? A lot of folks tell you to start off slow and then slowly build that faster while playing along to a metronome and slowly getting the metronome faster and playing the riff and that is a very effective way. How I personally did it was just kind of by happenstance. I used to play along to Pennywise records when I was younger. Um, I was a huge hardcore, punk rock, skate punk kind of guy and I used to play along to uh, Pennywise's About Time and Full Circle albums constantly and Fletcher being one of my absolute guitar heroes, um, I, he is solely responsible for my right hand uh, rhythm and that is the only way you will ever get uh, anything super tight with quad tracking or double tracking is just repetition um, and practicing the records or metronome Either way is fine, but doing it over and over again is really the only way. Hey Fluff, top three albums and did they change your life? Top three favorite albums and did they change my life? Um, I think if they were my top three albums, yes, they had some impact on my life, probably large. Um, this changes all the time, but my go-tos for top three albums are probably Alice in Chains' Dirt record. It was absolutely life-changing for me. Um, what's another one? Foo Fighters Color and the Shape was huge for me, believe it or not. And probably Nirvana's In Utero, I would say. I know that's kind of probably disappointing. I'm sure you guys, I'm much, I'm 33 years old, so like none of the newer stuff was like earth shattering for me. It was all, you know, when I was developing, when I was a teenager, it was in the mid nineties. And those were the albums that were just huge for me. There's, there's lots of other ones. I wouldn't even call those my top three. Those were just, three of my favorites off the top of my head right now. Out of it all, what would you say is the biggest tone provider? I see people constantly ask about pickups, but what would you say people disregard a lot? Cables, their amp, their guitar, their skill? I think people tend to really underestimate the value and the tonal payoff of a good piece of wood. What I mean by that is people think that even with a thousand dollar range uh, guitar that if you get a thousand dollar if you pay a thousand bucks for a guitar and you put some pickups in it it'll sound just like my buddy's Ernie Ball Music Man uh, guitar and that's not true at all the reason why those old guitars some vintage guitars sound so damn good is because the quality of wood well obviously it was much more plentiful, plentiful back then but a good solid quality piece of wood will get you 75 percent of the way there tone wise and requires less work with the pickups and the bridge and the frets and the neck. Now all those obviously play a huge part in the tone, but it all starts with the body wood. And a quality piece of wood uh, cannot be beat. It just can't. I guess to build upon the Kemper question, do you have any experience with the Axe Effects? I'm looking into both of these and I'm curious as to your experience with both. Thanks in advance. I do have experience with the Axe Effects. My Good friend, Mr. Jason Burns has an XFX2, and we have played around with the XFX and Kemper uh, quite a bit. And we've had them next to each other, and he's been through his XFX, and I've been through the Kemper, and vice versa. Um, I think the fun factor on the XFX is much higher than the Kemper's. I think the Kemper, um, you know, obviously it takes a sonic snapshot of like a mic setup that you have going and you want to take somewhere or something like that. If you don't want to take your tube amps out on the road, you can just profile them and take them with you. Um, the Axe Effects for me was just a lot of damn fun to just sit there and dial in patches. The only thing I don't like about the Fractal is there are too many options, in my opinion, for someone like me who likes to twist some knobs and go. Um, I do appreciate the fact that there are so many options, but sometimes when you're in a creative mode and you're looking for a certain sound and you can't, can't find it and you have to spend 45 minutes trying to find that sound, it can be a little frustrating, but uh, both of them are super awesome pieces of gear and it just depends really on what you want to use them for is how you should be basing which one you should buy. 
Um, the Fractal is so much damn fun. I love it. I would love one. Um, call me Fractal. Um, but yeah, I eventually I want to get one too. So I know, maybe I'll borrow his and do a video or something. Just wondering what your thoughts on signature gear is. Guitars, amps, pedals, pickups. Is it copying or do you think it's getting what you want without paying custom shop prices and just paying for the name? Having my own signature gear, I have my own uh, Beardcomber signature pickups from Fastback. Um, I can tell you that the appeal for a signature piece of gear is a couple of things. First, um, it's income, right? I mean, let's be honest. Um, if you have a chance to have a little bit of money doing what you love, you know, come in and, and supplement whatever your existing income is, that's a plus and it's coming from the music industry and that's ultimately all of our goals or, you know, no, no one would be like, no, I don't want to get paid for playing guitar. I, no, I don't want to do that. You know, no one does that. And if you say you do that, then you're lying. And so that's, that's the first part. The second part is, is there another pickup that sounds just like my pickup? My signature pickup. Well, there is now. The, the bare knuckle juggernaut is really, really damn close to my beard comber pickup. My beard comber came out a year before the juggernaut, but still. Um, and with a lot of signature gear, there might be something that sounds just like it out there, but you have to spend years and tons of money trying different stuff out to find that. Well, if you have someone that can make that piece of gear well, and you can just tell them what you're looking for, and then they can make it, that's basically cutting through most of the crap right there. You can cut out a hu huge amount of time and get what you want. Now, for the bigger stuff, you know, amps, guitars, things like that, um, most of the time it's a labor of love. love. And um, signature gear is cool, and normally signature gear is a good bridge between something custom shop and something standard and, you know, a production line, something like that. It's a good bridge for customizing something and getting it right out of the box while customized. So there you go. Uh, I think that's about it for this week. Again, if you have a question, leave it down below and maybe you'll appear on a future video, I don't know. But until then, I am Fluff and I thank you for watching. Peace.